What's going on? We back. Morrissey Sports Talk. Your boy CJ Goodfellow in the building. Another Detroit Lions video. I know we coming up on the season finale. Then we're going to get ready for the offseason draft. Who should get fired? Who should stay? Who should get cut? Who should get traded? But we in the building. Make sure you subscribe button. Hit the bell icon button. Won't miss another video. You dig. And um, some rumors going out there that um, Adam Gates may be the Detroit Lions uh, possible target to fill their future vacancy at offensive coordinator. Um, I like Adam Case. I like what he did with Jay Cutler in Chicago. I like what he was doing in Miami. Just never thought he had, had the talent. Never had the talent at quarterback. You know, with Tannehill's always been, is he good, is he, in good, is he not good? With Jay Cutler, it's always been, is he good? You know, but some, is he not good? He's never really been a premium quarterback. And that's kind of the same thing with Stafford. But the thing about Stafford is, he really never had the talent around him like Jay Cutler did at one point in Chicago, okay? I mean, Brandon Marshall, Alshon Jeffrey, Matt Forte, the list goes on and on, all right? Uh, Ryan Tannehill just hasn't been healthy in Adam Gates' tenure for the most part. Missed last year, been in and out the lineup this year. So, you know, so at the end of the day, this is all contingent on the Miami Dolphins firing Adam Gates' head coach. And obviously, he didn't get a fair shot because he never really had a stable quarterback, you know what I'm saying? Or stability at quarterback. But if he was to come to Detroit, this would be his second time here. I think he was here from 2003 to 2007, I think it was, during the Millen era. And he was a scouting assistant, worked his way up to a quarterback's coach. I mean, to an offensive uh, assistant, then to a quarterback's coach. Um, and, I, you know, I think, you know, this is one of the better fits. You know, my preferred fit is what I was saying at the beginning of last year was like uh, Gary Kubiak. You know what I'm saying? But you know Adam Gase wouldn't be bad. He'd be he'd be a he'd be a nice fit. He got a nice uh, quarterback friendly system. Um, he's innovative. Um, he's been here before. He kept his house here for twelve years until he sold it. It was in Dearborn. So um, he you know I, I like the, I like the move for the Lions. I really really do for Adam Gase, man. Um, anything seems better than Jim Bob Cooter until they actually get here and do worse than Jim Bob Cooter or do the same as Jim Bob Cooter. You know what I'm saying? But I like Adam Gates, man. Even his time in Chicago, offensive coordinator, I like what he was doing, man. He knew how to utilize the weapons they had there. He knew how to utilize all his weapons. And, you know, he knew how to kind of cater his offense towards, um, you know, towards his defense. You know, I mean, cater his offense towards his quarterback. He knew how understood defenses. He understood everything. So um, I ain't mad at it if they bring Adam Gates here. Man, I really, really like the move of bringing Adam Gates up in the D, you know what I'm saying? Back to the D, to be honest. And, you know, you know, I don't know if he has any connections to Bob Quinn or to the Patriots organization, but he does have connections to the Ford family, to the Miller era. And I know I talk shit about the Miller era. I didn't have no idea until I did some research about Adam Gates being here. But, um, no, pretty much he was a young dude coming through the system, coming up through the league with the Lions. And he, he made it, you know, after that, to you know, crazy Miller era. Something positive came of it, and it was Adam Gates. You know what I'm saying? He's really a rising star in his league with his offense and his and his skills. I don't really look at him as a head coach. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I haven't got the opportunity in Miami because nobody really watches the Miami up this Miami Dolphins up this way. A lot of people just knew that's where Dom Kasu went for a few years, but nobody really paid attention. So I don't really watch that game and say, "Dang, Adam Gates lost that game." And if you go back to Chicago with Jay Cutler, you can't be like, "Damn." Adam Gates lost that lost that game. Well, Jay Cutler lost the game. And when you put in Josh McDowell in that system, I think it was Josh McDowell in that system, he thrived with Adam Gates. Can he do the same thing for Matthew Stafford? I think so. I think it's important for them to integrate somebody else outside of the uh, Lions organization right now and that, that can come in here and actually be able to game plan week to week, install an offense, innovative, uh, understand, you know, uh, formations, understand – you know, route combinations, understand how to run the ball, understand how to utilize carry on Johnson in all three phases of the game, which is running the ball, catching the ball, and pass protection. Um, I like it. You know, somebody that knows how to understand how to use a tight end, every, knew how to, knows how to run the ball, you know, know how to utilize his weapons. And I think this could be the best move the Lions can make, really. And and, and to be honest, you can see Adam Gase as the head coach at waiting, to be honest. Real talk. Adam Gase can be the head coach and wait. <laughs> Low key, good. You know, and another thing about Adam Gase as well, too, if he has success with Matthew Stafford, 
I mean, how long does he stay with the Detroit Lions? Because he's going to be a hot head coaching candidate again. If he could revitalize Stafford, that means they would have to pay this man premium dollar to stay here to work with Stafford. Or they had to bring somebody he trusts from his Miami Dolphins staff, from his offensive staff, there with him to kind of learn the ropes and be the secondary offensive play card, maybe the quarterback's coach or offensive assistant, assistant like he did. And when Adam Gase, and he does, he is successful with, with Matthew Stafford, which I have a lot of faith he can be, when he get that head coaching nod, you know, similar to what happened with um with homeboy Kyle Shanahan in, in Atlanta, you know, Atlanta was prepared for Shanahan to leave, which they should have been having somebody behind him, prepping behind Shanahan, him mentoring his replacement, and then when he moved to San Francisco, that replacement could have came in. That's what the Lions need to do. Okay, they need to, you know, bring one of his trusted offense assistant in or a couple of them in. Had him learn, learn the system. And if you believe this guy's really going to be successful in this league or successful Matthew Stafford, he's going to go be a head coach. I mean, everybody can see that from this point. You know what I'm saying? I can see that. And if he goes on to be a successful offensive uh, uh, coordinator with Stafford, he will move on. You tutor, he tutor, tutor a couple young assistants. They move on with Stafford. And then you just keep the keep the ball rolling, okay? But I definitely like the idea. He's definitely one of the football offensive minds that I didn't think of. And you forget about him because he's in Miami. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't really watch Miami up here. You know what I'm saying? Even though Miami down there in Dade County, Broward County down there, they that's a football, like, really football hot hub. Tampa, you know, right in there. Even going up to Orlando, man, I stayed in that area for a second. Even going up to Pensacola, that's damn near Alabama, really. Uh, uh, Panama City, that's just a football gunshine state, man. But in the professional, in the professionals, they never really respected the Miami Dolphins for the most part. Then you got more respect than the Miami Dolphins. You know what I'm saying? Even though the U got smashed by Wisconsin, they ain't been doing too well. Mark Rich from Georgia, he ain't been able to really get create that magic he did last year. But you forget about him, you know. You know, I looked for, I thought the Lions were going to do some stupid stuff like Mike, Mark Trestman. Remember, he was the head coach, or the, I think he was the head coach for the Chicago Bears. He had an innovative offense coming out of Canada and really coached his way out the league. <laughs> and I don't know how many people truly remember that, but um, I'm thinking they're going to get somebody like him or, or, or some other lame duck. You know, I also let Jeff Fisher, what's his name? Jeff Fisher from the University of Michigan. He an offensive assistant with Sean McVay. I love Adam Gase. I love Gary Kubiak. He don't want the stress of being the head coach. But it is some inklings that Mike Shanahan will be replacing Vance Joseph as the head coach in Denver, and Kubiak could be his offensive coordinator with his son over at San Francisco. So um, at the same time, I mean, my wish list goes no in particular no order. But I like Adam Gase, I like Gary Kubiak, I like Jet Fisher. Um, those are the three I really really like um, as an offensive coordinator. You know what I'm saying? I really like those man. Well, obviously Bruce Arian ain't gonna come back, but. As well, you can also get innovative. You can see if, you know, Matt, uh, Peyton Manning would like to coach, pa Carson Palmer. You see if you want to try to tutor him and see if he come in. Because I say that because Byron Leftwich has been doing really good play calling with Josh Rosen in Arizona since he stepped up. So you want you really want to turn over every rot. But I like those three, Gubi, Kubiak, um, Gase, and um, I forgot who else I said. Jeff Fisher out there with the St. Louis Rams. I really love those three to replace them. Um, to replace Jim Bob Cooter, but this is all contingent on Jim Bob Cooter being let go. But uh, I ain't mad at Adam Gates, man. Come back to the D, make the D great again, make the Lions great again, and then go out there and get you another head coaching job. He, if my, and that's if Miami fire him, you know, I don't know how they can fire Adam Gates. I mean, they lost so much talent. Byron Maxwell and Dominican Sue. I mean, Mario Williams was a flake out. Um, Cameron Wake has been injured. I mean, shit, Kiko Alonso ain't been all that. I mean, they lost a lot of talent, man. They got Xavier Howard. They starting to get that talent back, but they lost a ton of talent over there in Miami, man. You know what I'm saying? And he ain't had his quarterback. So, really, can they put the blame on him? You know, but if he hit that market, the Lions going to have some competition for him. I'll tell you that much, man. But it is Motor City Sports Talk. I appreciate everybody for checking in one time for the one time. Much blessed to everybody checking us out. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the bell icon button. Don't forget, we on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And hopefully I get a chance to go live real, real soon. I'll check out this Pistons game and chillax. Um, also, you want to reach out to me in the email. Uh, do accommodate video requests. Um, and if you got any questions, business, sponsorships, or inquiries about the channel, or you want to do a partnership, or you want to start a channel, I do help people out in that aspect. Also, you want to make a donation to the channel. That link's there as well.
as well. Mercy Sports Talk. We go.